Hello, welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are talking about the fact that, let's face it, hitting people is not natural. Oh, but Jeremy, just wait. Just wait, you bunch of, you bunch of contrarians. Just hold on. We'll get there. Andrew is Andrew Adams, frequent co-host, shows up for all the Thursday stuff, sometimes for other stuff, and good friend, and, and thanks for being here for, and for all the other stuff that you do. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host for the show, founder of Whistlekick. And what do we do at Whistlekick? Well, we support traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists. We've got a website that shows all the things that we're doing, and it is <gasps> whistlekick.com, as you might have guessed. If you go to whistlekick.com, you're going to see a lot of stuff over there. All the things that we're involved in, lots of links. It can be a little overwhelming, as I know, because part of my job is to keep track of all of it. And I struggle with that because that's how much there is. <laughs> One of the things I spent some time on today is our store. There is a store. We sell stuff, everything from stickers and hoodies and hats to pants. I'm not going to show you my pants. A uh, bunch more. Use the code PODCAST15. It's going to save you 15% and it helps us out, lets us connect that yeah the show does lead to sales which is an important thing on the back end with accounting the show this show martial arts radio gets its own website whistlekickmartialartsradio.com because i use the simplest names i can when i buy a domain name and if you head on over there you're going to see that we do two shows each and every week all under the heading of connecting educating and entertaining the traditional martial arts world that is our goal here at whistlekick and if you want to show your appreciation for the show and for the company, for the things that we do to support you, yeah, you, and the people that you like in the martial arts world, well, you might make a purchase, you might share an episode, or join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash kick. For those of you listening, Andrew essentially has... Um, no, like don't a, tell them. They, no, they, they're going to watch. They're going to find out. I'm not going to make them watch the video for that. <laughs> Come on. That was fun. It was fun. <laughs> but I making them watch for watch the video, go back. Like they're listening and they're like, oh, all right. I got to go all watch right, the first five minutes. You basically put up like an Etch-A-Sketch app on your iPad and scratched out whistlekick doc, or patreon.com slash whistlekick. I did which it in different his, colors. Which, which is funny, um, but not funny enough to make them go watch the video. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as an aside, if you think this is ridiculous, you should see us before and after episodes. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll release a blooper video. Like a blooper reel. Every episode is a blooper video. All right, fair enough. Every Thursday show is a blooper video. <laughs> uh, where was I? Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick gets a place where we post exclusive content like upcoming guests for the show and bonus audio and video episodes, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Seriously, $2 a month is, is your initial buy in goes up from there the more you're willing to contribute the more we give back to you if you want the full list all of the things you can do to support us from the paid to the free the time intensive to the very easy as well as a flowing mix of again exclusive not exclusive like patreon and this but just completely exclusive to this go to whistlekick.com slash family you got to type it we even give you a little timestamp at the top here's when we last updated this Okay, Andrew. Yeah. We made an important distinction in the word choice of the title of this episode. Yeah. We did not say fighting is not natural. No. We said hitting people is not natural. Correct. I would argue fighting is quite natural. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it, is, it is something that is, is quite deeply instilled in our humanity, in our, our animalistic tendencies. It is something that happens frequently among, um, it's the animal kingdom. It is core to social standing. Mm -hmm. All of these things are true. Not saying it's mm -hmm. right or wrong. Not saying mm -hmm. we shouldn't exert effort to combat it. 
but fighting is quite natural. Yes. Hitting is not. Is not. At least in my opinion, it is not. And and I, I we'll talk a lot about it, but I, you know, we can give some specific examples as to why I don't think it is natural. <clears throat> What do you think when I say that? When I when I when I brought this topic to you and I mm. said I want to do an episode on because this is my I mean I, I did <clears throat> I won't lie I got this idea prompt from another YouTube video that I was watching mm. and he brought up this topic and I said you know what it's very true and the more and more I thought about it I said you know what I want to do an episode on that so what what were your thoughts when I sent to you hey I want to do an episode on hitting people isn't natural. I think of how most um, non-combat, non, non, non mutually agreed fights Mm -hmm. among untrained individuals, you know, not martial artists, go. They usually end up with some. They start with some some half-hearted swinging. And then they grab each other. Yeah. There's, they usually grab each other. Because I believe on some level, and if you look into the animal kingdom, you see this too. There's a goal of expressing dominance without causing injury. Exactly. Look at every pair of dogs that fight. You're telling me those dogs can't tear each other apart? Even the, even the winning dog should be absolutely shredded if that's the goal. But that's not the goal. You can say the same thing. About, watch cats fight. They make a racket. Yep. And they, they bat at each other. And then one of them kind of like cowers down. Yeah. Submits. I, I often think of this in terms of caveman days. Mm-hmm. Right, you and I are both cavemen. We are in a tribe, right? And now or if, then, um, yes. Okay, <laughs> take your pick. <clears throat> we are part of a, a society, our mm-hmm. our little tribe, our little group, whatever. We both have roles to play in the group, right? Everybody mm-hmm. has to be out, you know, hunting and gathering, and like we all have uh, things to do. <clears throat> If I and, and I might want to exert dominance over you and and be above you in the pecking order, maybe I get to sleep a little closer to the fire, or maybe I get mm. the best, the better choice of meat or whatever. But if in trying to exert dominance over you, I p- strike you and break my hand, mm. there's no way for me to fix that because we're cavemen, right? Modern medicine doesn't really exist. I'm now out. If in doing so, I'm striking you and I hurt you and maim you to the point that you can't function within the our tribe, our tribe is now out two people. Right. It's not natural. We we would never want to do that. I would want to exert my dominance over you in some other way. The Here's, only reason, let, let me extend what you're saying. Yeah. The only reason the type of fighting, combat, that we are used to in the modern era is able to exist is because we are all not individually responsible for our, our own food and security. Yeah, exactly. And if you take it even a little to, to more modern times, have you ever seen kids fight like little kids? Yes, but they're, they're, they're not like, punching and kicking they usually like you said they inevitably end up grabbing and rolling around on the ground because that's natural you know we you and i if we were to get into a fight we would be striking we would be hitting but that's because what we were trained to do that's not what we're talking about have you ever experienced um an er, an early martial arts practitioner on a, a sparring day and they tend to hang out outside of range and then they kind of try to time things and rush in yeah they try to grab you they're like ah right like there, there's something instinctive there we, we we want to be able to say okay i win you lose 
but neither of us gets injured. There's a difference between hurt and injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I think it's interesting to think about that, that it's Mm -hmm. not something that we naturally come by. Now, having said that, if you, it's interesting to think of, given that that's the case, if you were to pull 100 people off the street and ask them if they're good at fighting, Mm -hmm. a vast majority of them will say, yes, I am. And I'm not talking trained people. I'm talking just random, generic Joe Schmo off the street because it's instinctual in us to want to be able to exert dominance over people. And, you know, maybe it's the, uh, what's, it's the the Dunning-Kruger effect or something like that, the concept of you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, that those people that are untrained, they don't realize how untrained they are. But it's instinctual in us to want to be better than others. And so people think they can fight mm. when you know they might not really be able to fight in the sense that, that you and I could. Sure. Sure. And, and that, I, I, I suspect this came up for you right around the time I was seeing some social media posts going around on this topic, the idea that way more people think they know how to fight than actually know how to fight. Mm-hmm. And the percentage of people who believe they would be successful in a fight, just def- the, the, the statistics don't work, right? Like, like most people think they would win in a fight. Well, most people can't win in a fight. Yeah. Unless they're all fighting that, that minority group of people who, you know, know they're not fighting, right? Like it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, what percentage of people will win in a fight? 50. Yeah. Only half statistically over across enough fights, enough randomness, half of people will win the fight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, forgetting, of course, my, my personal belief, you can't win a fight, right? Like, like we're not talking about the philosophical aspects of this. We're talking about the, you know, just kind of the, the, the raw primal elements here. And I find that really fascinating. And I think that, as you said, this all connects in because if you believe that you are, terrible and you would not be able to win a fight under any circumstances if too many people feel that way you end up with a social hierarchy that that really doesn't work well. doesn't work it, yeah. the bottom is just really flat and that's that's not good for pecking order you get people who are just kind of like i don't know am i better than you are you better than what's going on right like and that just yeah. um We're not going to unpack that because that starts to bring in other elements of uh, mm-hmm. social standing that I, I think are outside the scope of what we need yeah. here. Um, now let's talk for a moment about, I'm sure some of the, the folks who might be listening or watching saying, yeah, but you know, like you see, you see people on the street and they, they, they kick and, and stuff like that, that's hitting. And you're saying that's not natural. Where's that coming from? Yeah. They had to have learned that somewhere. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Th- this and, is, go ahead. Uh, and, you know, we also may have listeners that are thinking, well, wh- what about war? Like his weapons. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, back in caveman days when they started to hit, yeah, they used their hands to make something else to hurt somebody when they would go to war with a different clan. But, they were using a tool, not their their own hands, right? Because they don't want to damage themselves because they put themselves out of commission if that happens. In the length of time that human beings have existed on Earth, and and this is off, um, assuming you believe in evolution, mm-hmm. okay? Um, if if you believe in in a shorter Judeo Christian. Christian timeline, you know, 6,000 ish years, this isn't going to work. So those of you who, who are, who have that worldview, I I, I don't have a comment. Just skip, Mm. skip ahead a few minutes, but for the rest of us, what percentage of time that human beings have been on earth? Have we actually had wars? Mm. It's pretty short. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, there's all, there, there have been skirmishes for a relatively long period of time, 
but not in the way that we do it now. Yeah. 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 You know, there, there was a recognition that life was valuable. And that's why if, if you go back even not that long ago, tribes would often have pick a champion and they would fight proxy, mm -hmm. proxy battle. So now yep. one max two people get injured. Yeah. That, that's that show that shows something, right? It shows an inherent value for the life, the physical body and that, a bunch of people getting together, hitting each other, even though we might be able to do it, it's not natural. Exactly. And you rarely see it in the animal kingdom. That's not to say it doesn't happen ever, um, but it is incredibly rare for uh, for that type of action to happen in, within animals. Outside of predator prey. Yep, yeah, yep. When, when we talk about an animal bringing down prey for food, it's a whole different story. Yeah. No, we're talking in the same species. Yep. Yep. Where else do we go with this? That was cut. Kind of, I mean, that those are my thoughts, uh, you know, yeah. and I hope that this discussion sparked some thoughts in other people. I am admittedly fascinated at the psychology that makes people want to fight with each other. Hmm both the kind of impromptu somebody's at the bar and somebody talks to their wife and they don't like that. And now they want to fight that person as well as the organized rule-based combatives, you know, here's the rule set. I'm going to fight this person to see who the better fighter is. I find both of those fascinating because I don't want to do either one. Yeah. Yeah, neither one of those line up for me. The, the the latter a little bit more, you know, just as a martial artist because you know testing skill is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I don't like getting punched in the face, so let's not do that. Um, so I do spend some time thinking about the psychology of this, and this is a whole other layer. I think we've done a pretty good job proving the point that this that this is true. And I'm sure some people disagree, and I would love to hear where those disagreements come in. But I'm going to throw one more point of support in here. So many people who have never done martial arts gravitate towards what? If they're going to train, they want to do BJJ. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is not to say that Brazilian jiu-jitsu curriculums are completely free of striking, but when they think about that sort of training, they're thinking about grappling. They're thinking about grabbing people and defending people, grabbing them. There's something that I think on a primal level resonates because they understand that is something that is frequent to happen. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay. Feedback, criticism expansion of ideas we want to hear all of it bring it on email me jeremy whistlekick.com or you know if you want to tell andrew how dumb i am email him andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com if you've got thoughts on subsequent topics or guest ideas for the show you can email us as well we want to hear from you head on over to whistlekick martial arts radio.com that's one of the several places you can sign up for our newsletter we send them out occasionally some good stuff in there. Try to keep you up to date on what's going on with us, new products, things like that. And don't forget, you've got the code podcast15 to save 15% at, on just about anything at whistlekick.com. I was going to do it without checking my notes, but I'm <laughs> second guessing myself now. Uh, other things you can do to help us leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Google, Facebook, Spotify. Help out with our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Interested in a seminar? I can come in, teach you some stuff. We can have a good time. The seminar that I teach, uh, those of you who have experienced know it's a lot of fun. It's kind of eye-opening stuff that, to my knowledge, nobody else is teaching. And I think that, yeah, we did it all. There's the, there's the outro. So episode comes to a close. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile and have a great, have a great day. day.